Hello everyone, George here, and picking up from the last video, we're going to add to our Vive not only the graphic for time, but we're also going to add to it the graphic for the amount of power. Now, in Five Nights at Freddy's, power is represented by a battery, and uh, while we could jump into Photoshop and create something like that really quick if we want to, hmm, do we want to actually? Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Just go to Start and Adobe Photoshop. Let's look up, let's see, FNAF battery power. Someone's got to have a picture somewhere, right? Here we go. So usage bar shown there. And actually, wow, I'm completely wrong. Power is shown by an actual percentage, um, integer value percentages. Uh, usage is shown through a series of graphical bars indicating how much you're actually using. We're probably going to want to put both of these in our game. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's see, new, let's do 2048 by 2048. That's a good size file. Save as, YouTube, reproduce it, FNAF, Photoshop, um, usage gauge. All right, so usage gauge, trying to think how I want to handle this. I could create a series of objects in Maya that uh, each separate one is a game object. I could create multiple textures and change the UVs of that object. And they're all valid ways of doing it. What do I feel like doing right now? Let's do it in Maya, why not? Let's turn on our grid and let's create the graphics that we're going to be using for this. So let's go into here and I believe it was, you know, blue or green all the way up to a red color. So we're going to create a series of boxes that do just that. Uh, I guess each box in here, let's go to, let's do it actually in here so I can use things properly. Select, modify, smooth, smooth that down a bit. Selection, modify, let's contract. Let's do this by 10 pixels and select modify smooth again by another 10 pixels and that becomes our default bar that we're going to be using let's go ahead and create a new layer get the steam vr out of the way new layer shift five fill in the color right there and let's take a look so and it's got this little kind of coloration on the side as well shift d uh, control d to deselect come in here let us, uh, how do I want to do this? I can select the object, deselect a good portion of it, shift F5, no. Uh, let's go to color and choose a darker version and shift F5, enter, shift D. That's uh, a little too dark, right? Control Z, shift, change it, color, something like that. Shift F5, enter, control D. Hmm, do I really want to do it this way? Could do it a different way. Well, let's keep it this way for now. So this becomes one of our batteries at the moment. And of course, let's go to edit. Let's don't apply edit preferences, grid guides. And let's see, we have 20, every 25 percentage points, we're going to have a guide uh, subdivisions. Let's set that to two. Now I'll get one in the center. So I should now be able to plant that right there. We're going to duplicate this a bunch of times. We're going to do a different one for each of the main colors that we plan on having. So let's go ahead and move that there. Um, grab ball, move it down ever so slightly. Come on, there we go. All right, so we have green, yellow, and red. Well, you know, I have no idea how many we're gonna end up using. So I don't have a few extras just because, because we like to be prepared. Scroll this down, duplicate it, and place it right there. So we got the top layer and we have the bottom layer. So this is actually the complete exact opposite of what I would consider intuitive. So let's re, let's move these around a bit up here, there, and there. All right, so we're gonna have, let's see, let's call this usage one. And for each of these, we're going to modify them ever so slightly just by using layer styles, I think. So let's go into color overlay and, well, actually I want to do hue, I think. Yeah, we'll do hue. And we want this to be closer to that color, but slightly off, right? So more like that maybe, hit okay. I'm gonna duplicate this, bring it on down and we're going to offset it a little bit further each time. Do it again. Okay, so there's our different colors. That's much more red though. 
than what I have. So let's go in here. I'm going to stick to hue. It's not 100% exact, but it's it's pretty close. Um, really, I should be, instead of pink, I should be making this a bit more red. And if I want to, we can do that at some point in the future. Let's get rid of that background because I do want transparency. File. Save as um, usage gauge. Let's make this a PNG. Go into my textures. Save this on out. Let's go ahead and we can actually go ahead and do the power portion of this whole thing. So let's go in here and we need a new graphic. So let's go ahead and do game object, create empty, put it under controller left as well. Uh, zero the coordinates out. I'm going to have to do the same thing as before though. I'm going to need to rotate it. So let's frame up on it. Zoom on in. And let's go to add component, text mesh, just like before and put power, same values as the other one. So actually, let's just go over here, copy this, copy, come to this one, right click and paste the values. And I am going to change a few things. Power and time is what I want by default for it to say. Go over here to change this now to uh, power graphic. And now power is going to need to be rotated 90 degrees. And we also want to Z it, just like the other one. How far is that one? So let's grab that one, go to this one, face that as well. But I do want power to be, I guess, above time. We'll put it somewhere right around there. We're going to need a little bit more space just because power is not only going to in include power, it's also going to have the battery below it, which we'll add shortly. Okay, save. Go over back to Maya now, and in Maya we're going to create a plane, frame on up, reduce these subdivisions down to one. Uh, let's go to right click and new material, Fong, and let's call this oop, oop, plane one. We're going to call this uh, usage one because there's going to be multiple usages. And yes, uh, actually the more I think about this, the really I should be coding this up myself and just creating the, the object inside of Unity. But you know what? We're here, so let's just do it. There's my material, following one, usage underscore M, color, file, usage underscore file, and usage right here, underscore. There we are. And choose the file. Um, we're in the wrong game. I am making my own game called Weakened Deity, which I will not be talking about because it's my personal game, uh, but expect to see at some point in the future. Let's see, uh, set project or well, recent projects, right? Recent projects, FNAF, file. Let's save this now. We're still in Weakened Deity. Let's go to scenes and call this usage. Grab this now with a little bit of luck. We're in the right folder, great. Up to go to textures and find the usage gauges wonderful and there's all of the ones there now obviously that's not what we're going to be doing for this we're going to go to window uv editor wow that's big it's a big uv editor must have been doing this when i was in 4k mode okay right click uvs and we're going to move these uvs over to there and these ones up to there well actually they're exactly where they should be all right, never mind. I don't need to do anything. Okay, so that's done. So that is a power bar. Uh, what do they look like again? They are slightly taller than they are wide. So let's do this actually. Verts, grab these two, click this in exit, and X that. F8, there we are. So there's one power object. So that's usage one. We need usages for all eight. So let's do that. Let's do control D. And shifty, 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 one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And they should all be named appropriately as well. Now we can go under window and the UV editor and start moving our UVs. Okay, so we have all of the usage types here. All of them. Now they're all rotated. Uh, improperly. I'm going to want them facing down the z-axis. So let's rotate these 90 degrees. Enter. And uh, let's see. 
and also let's freeze their transforms. Modify, freeze transforms, um, scale and rotation is what I want. There we go. And actually, I do want to zero everyone out and put them back where they belong. There we are. Save, uh, grab all of them together, file, export selection, and let's see, FBX, up, up, back. And let's see, let's go to file, uh, send to Unity, set Unity project, it's correct. No, it's not correct, set Unity project, there we are. File, send to Unity selection, and let's do usage graphics. Uh, embed the media, that's all fine. Everything else should be good. I'm gonna put it in FBX export. Okay, come over to Unity now. Let it load everything in. Let's go under FBX, and there's our usage graphics right there. Now these are gonna be huge, or, well, they're gonna be a size, let's put it that way. Scale this down, bring in the usage graphics right there. Frame on up, and they're really tiny, so let's click on this, bring them up by a factor of 10. Hit apply. Frame on up. Where are they? There they are. Frame up. And where are they? Am I just on the wrong side? Ah, they're they're facing the wrong direction, aren't they? So that's Z forward. That's it doesn't matter. Okay, so we have our usage graphics. They are way too big. Let's go ahead and Reduce them back down to the correct size. So let's do one, apply. There we go. Much better. Uh, so the usage graphics now, now that we have them, let's go ahead and move forward. So we have our power manager. Where is that? Oops, please go away. There we are. So let's go to power manager and open that up. So we need to do a request I believe I have a public, I don't have a public. We have public stat instance, we have public float charge, we can get the charge. Okay, so we'll do that. Let's open up our camera again, go down to the power graphic, and let's create a new script. Create C Sharp script and call this power graphic. Double click. So power graphic is going to be attached to the actual so Power Graphic is going to be actually a couple different things. It's going to contain not only this part component, it's going to have a second component. So I should probably create a new game object, empty, and call this Power Graphics. Bring this up here under that. Put Power Graphic there. Grab this and reset it to zero and zero and zero for now. Frame on up really quick so it's completely in the wrong spot. So is this, let's just zero it out. We'll deal with spacing once we figured everything out. Frame on up on the thing and uh, yeah, there we are. Move this whole thing up and up there. Okay, and instead of power graphic, let's call this um, battery life graphic. So the battery life graphic is what's going to be important for us. So let's go ahead and on battery graphics, add component and call this, what do we call this thing? Um, power graphic. So power graphic is going to have two references, public, whoops, public text, excuse me, Oh, did it lose its association with Unity? It did. Okay. Close that. Double click and open it up again. All right. Public text mesh um, text. We're also going to want to hold the usage. So we're going to have a bank of these batteries and we're going to add and subtract batteries as the usage goes up. We're going to do this in kind of the... Uh, not necessarily the smartest way. We're just going to pull the uh, the actual power manager at the moment. In reality, the power manager will only have its states change well, not so often. So really, the power manager should probably be pushing out a message to the power graphic every time something does change to go ahead and update itself. But let's just do it the easy way for the moment. 
So we're going to want to grab the instance to the power manager. So let's do power manager uh, PM. It's going to be equal to power manager dot instance. Oops, there we go. Now that we have it, we can query it by doing power manager dot what is it? Uh, charge. Now charge is what is charge? Is that a float? Yes. So float charge is equal to PM charge. Now charge itself should only be an integer value, so we should do that as well. So let's do um, int charge integer is equal to charge and just typecast that. Now that is an integer, we can go ahead and update the graphic appropriately. So we're going to do text dot text. It's going to be equal to, and we're going to do charge integer dot to string. Now I believe it has a percentage sign on the end, right? So it should say power power left plus charge integer to string, and then we'll do plus and put a print uh, a percent percent on the end of that. All right. So now that we have that, the next thing we want to do is the battery graphics themselves. And uh, I actually think this video is getting kind of long, so we're going to split this one into two separate videos. But before we do end, let's make sure that the power is actually displaying properly. Now before we can do that, we do need to make a few associations. We need to go over here to the power graphic. Come on. There we go. And we're just going to apply this right there. Perfect. Let's go ahead and hit run. Oh, place this on my head. There we are. And there we are. Power, 98%. 12 a.m. So let's go ahead and do something that would drain power. Oh boy, that's fast. Let's uh, not do that. Well, we're down to 0%. But anyway, it works. So we have a power rating and we have time. So in the next video, we will uh, add the usage bars to the controller as well um, and make that, you know, all work properly. And then once we've got, since now technically we have time and power in here, we're going to start tackling the, uh, the overall kind of gameplay experience uh, in the next, you know, you know, the next, I don't know, five or six videos. We're actually going to make this a real game. We're going to put in those waypoints and we're going to make, uh, well, it's something that we can actually play. All right. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks, everyone. Bye.